Okay, um, just to kind of make some reminders, we are a little behind schedule, so if this goes late, it's, it's because we had such a nice breakfast. So I just want you to be sensitive to that because we really can't cut off our sessions and make them shorter. So we'll be a little behind, but that's okay. We're flexible. Okay, so I just want to remind you of today, 3.30, at the Brit, um, on uh, the, no, you guys, there's nothing glamorous about the Brit. You've all been there, right? Okay. The only thing good about the Brit is we're all going to be there together, right? So, um, so we want to go, and it's close. So we're going to the Brit. We're going to have a good time. Uh, we have a karaoke guy, Bruce. What I don't know. Hey, um, no, yeah, so we'll be there. Yeah. Just wait till you meet him, right, Paul? Okay. He's going to do Bruce. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, so uh, just muster up your inner superstar for today at 3.30. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So and to, for a little bit of inspiration. <laughs> yes. There we go. Not me, no. Well, sort of, but not really. Okay. All right. <laughs> since we're on our way back from the district office. I'm so excited to be here. It's been fun to get to move to a new place and see new things. Wow. <laughs> it's a great place. You're really going to love it. Do I own a syrup company? Yeah. A syrup company? You're not... No. You're not connected to that estate at all? Not that I know. Um, so, is it Anne? Or Annie? Mm, yes, that's a great question. We've been asking that since I was born, and uh, it just changes depending on our, our phases of life. And uh, I think right now it's feeling a little bit like Annie, but either one works. Okay, so tell me then, um, what did you do all summer? Oh, that's what I did all summer. I ran around and things, went on a trip to Denver, and just jammed up. Justin Timberlake, little JT, uh, I can't remember the name of the song. No, but wait, no, wait, wait, I think I know it. I think I know it. This is it. it. Okay, I know no words. Okay, okay, I don't know much either. No, but, but you know what? No, we're going to rock it. Yeah, okay. This is Jalen.
we did the phone call today, or just I thought it just came up on the phone. I don't know. 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 All right, hold on. Let's let's keep let's continue. Hey, Dave, Eric, what are you guys doing? This is to keep us all from sitting in one place for more than three hours. So um, we have you all broken up into these little amazing groups. We have our classified staff on the, our wheel. You're going to be starting in the library study. It's kind of a merge of one and two for a tech session. And the reason we have our classified staff kind of separated out for this is because your tech questions and needs are a little different, right, than teachers. So we want to be sure that we address those. We have the opportunity to ask those questions. We have Team Marvel, which is the math, world language, English drama, and physical education. You're going to start in the main center of the library, okay, uh, for a session on understanding our students. And then um, guidance, social studies, science, special ed, business, living skills, Voyager, art, and music. You are Team, you're the X-Men. And you're going to be starting here in the auditorium. So if you have not picked up your little paper here, it's also, you think you also have like a little card, right? on the outside of your, to tell you what team you're on. So what you want to remember is just where you start, and the rest of your adventure will be determined as you go along. No, they'll tell you where you are. You can tell on your paper. I'm just going to All right, so if you can make your way to those places, we are ready to start. You want to do it with me? Okay. I will, I will, I'll do 
a little bit of that? We're not screwed anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Jan. Good morning. No new announcements for me. Thank you. <laughs> um, real quick, there in your folders you'll find your emergency card. It's um, yellow buff this year. Please fill it out so we have your names. The same information about um, BTSA membership form and not in the quad form. And I do know that Shalini was talking about the grant form. We're going to be going over that later. We're going to be having, we're developing a, a form that's going to be on Chalk School that's one form. So we'll be going over that later. You will have that. Um, Maria's going to be rolling it out. And so don't worry about not having that in your folder. Um, not in the quad is great to come to. You can work with that. Um, how do I? Okay, you also have a green paper that shows the teachers, their room numbers. It does not have the voicemail, but from inside you can only you can dial room to room. You know that with just the four digits. So you have the periods they're teaching, it's preliminary, you'll get another one with all of the information on it later, but I wanted you to have it now. The same with the uh, classified staff mainly, but it's all the outlying areas. that some of you have white, some of you have this orange, and it tells you the um, telephone numbers for the rooms, for the offices, for the who's in charge of what, and the alpha, and it's just kind of a handy thing to keep. That probably will not change. Um, Steve wanted me to let you know that the school is gonna be open on Saturday, but it's only gonna be open from nine to two. Um, we are, the, the alarm's gonna go on after that, so you will not be able to get in, stay in it will not be open at all on Sunday. So if anybody feels like they want to come down on Saturday, we will have a little bit of time. Tanya? For the staff director, we get electronic copies of those two, is that true? Absolutely. And the same with the admin roles are in there. They're on, they're real small letters, so a double-sided sheet. That is online. Dave put that online, so it, you, can, you can get it offline. Uh, that should be, it should be, it's as accurate as we made it yesterday from the changes that we put in yesterday, so. Well, then I printed last year's. We do have it. We do have this year's. We will send it electronically. That's the, uh, whoops. I apologize. I apologize. It is it is updated. No, the one that's updated is the classified, the office staff thing. The majority of it is the same. The numbers are the same. I will send you an electronic copy, and I'll just have everybody else pull it from their five folders. Um, keep it. Would you like a hard copy too, or just electronic? Absolutely. All right. I'll this afternoon, I'll send it out to you. Okay. See, I'm in last year. I haven't started the year yet. I haven't had a vacation yet. That's fine. Okay. I think that's all I have. Sorry. Athletic passes. They're pink this year. If you'd like one, I will have them. I'll give some to Annie. So you can come by, sign your name when you pick them up, and there are athletic passes to go to any of the games. Yeah. Can you guys hear me without the microphone? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. You didn't try to hear. You're good, brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we can hear them just fine, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk, yeah. let's talk to you. Let's talk to you. Let's talk enrollment. Okay. This is, this is the reality. Um, 
seven sections and we were uh, down 14 sections from that previous year. This year we were given 304 sections. We're down 45 students from the pre from last year. So uh, when you look at what the, the district has done in actuality, they've given us more sections than we really do need as a school. Right now when I do my section allocation, we have about 7.5 um, more sections than needed when I do the section allocations. That, but I wouldn't worry about that because the, the district is saying they're gonna keep us whole and um, for staffing reasons we will be okay. I wouldn't I want to cause too much alarm but I could do a little emoji face there. Um, this is as of uh, 8, 8, 5, 16. So we've received some EL students in the last week from Cupertino, so those numbers will go up a little bit more. And students were leaving and students are coming back. We'll stabilize in about a week or so. Department leads are gonna they're gonna get this information and also send them a section allocation of where we are. But pretty much every department is a little bit overstaffed with the sex with the exception of business. They're understaffed by 0.97 and if students drop them will be within the ratio there. And no teachers are over their, their number of individual student contacts um, for the year. So that's good news there. Um, any questions about enrollment? Yeah, I just want to take a minute just to talk about that. I was going to wait to the end, but it seems like an appropriate time to talk about it. Just to let you know that um, the committee that I'm on, I'm not a voting member, but I, but I get to be privy to all the conversations that are happening in the room. It's a very good, diverse, thoughtful group, and they are preparing their recommendation that they're going to give to the board either in late October or early November, because they know we have to make decisions and we've got to look ahead. So I can't tell you what's going to happen. I can just tell you that we'll know more as October, November are coming. And I, I will let you know the recommendation that they offer at the board. Because everybody gets that this decision needs to be made as soon as possible in terms of planning for next year. Okay, So that's really all I know. Thanks, Maria. And then in terms of the master schedule, um, I plan on getting started this Friday afternoon. No, no, um, how many holes exi uh, exist? There's actually seven in the entire school, which is wow. wow. That's the good news, right? That's and classes are fairly balanced and whatnot. But um, the bad news is because we don't have a lot of holes that could affect TAs. So some students did sign up to be TAs. We put that in their schedule already for those few. So you know, for those few students, about five of them are seniors. No, no sophomores have a hole, and I think one junior has a hole, and some of those were just unavoidable, but the reality of it is we might be seeing a little bit of a decline in the number of students that want to be TAs because we put that together in that way. So, because, yeah, Maria said, don't have holes, so I tried hard. <laughs> Maybe a little too much. So, um, anyways, so not too many, which is pretty good. And then um, we're pretty balanced in terms of uh, class sizes. So you'll see that sometimes we were not able to balance classes in your schedules. There's a reason for that. Um, for example, in the English language uh, arts department, English departments, some of those A-plat classes have more females that signed up for that class. So you're going to have a gender balance that's a little bit different for your English teachers. But for the most part, if you're looking at um, your overall numbers, we, we balanced them as much as we could, and then I want to give a big hand um, to our fabulous counselors for coming in during change day. We worked through a new system, and they were helping balance schedules, change kids' schedules. We put a new system out using Chalk School, and um, a lot of kids were able to view their schedules. We knew they viewed their schedules. They came in and, 
and went through change as they usually do every single year. But by going online, it allowed them to fill out a form. We could track how many saw their schedules, wanted changes. We also made changes for students that were not able to come to change day. So that was a bit of a difference, which is really good news. It just became a lot more transparent for the students and it gave them more opportunities to be able to have a better schedule that they would like to have. So it, and it just tightens everything up for us so we know we're getting kids in the right place. So that was a bit of a change and we have some kinks to work on on that. But again, big hand to the counselors because they were fabulous during that time. So a bunch of kids took AP exams. Most of them scored well. Um, I usually put a lot of numbers in here, but I didn't want to do that this year. Uh, Maria and I talked about that and we thought, look, the reality of it is our students get really super stressed out about numbers. We don't want to put a bunch of numbers up for you guys. It stresses you out. Um, so we decided to go ahead and just say, look, the reality is our kids did really well. As usual, if you were a teacher of an AP class or you didn't teach an AP class, you want to know generally how our kids performed, send me an email and I will find that information for you and uh, get that back to you as timely as possible. Any questions about my part? I have a question. Is it okay to, to say to students, if you don't want to give your best on the AP exam, don't take the test? Because I had a handful of students, I don't know, maybe they take it because their parents are pressuring them, but they score once, and I know that they knew more than that. And either they decide, oh, I'm already going to do English as my neighbor, so I don't need this. Or for whatever the reason, they just go to the test and then, you know, I mean, I just think students have the opportunity to take the exam if they want that opportunity. If they don't want that opportunity, um, then, you know, I think you're working with them on an individual basis and you would know that. I wouldn't make a blanket statement to the entire class, but you might want to talk to them on an individual basis and say, hey, look, if you really are going to blow this test off, then why, I honestly think, why would you waste your money? Well, I think that's the thing. They've already paid. Yeah, they've already paid. They've already paid and they can't get it back and maybe they're yeah, that's, that's a hard one. Melissa? I just think from the college admissions perspective, though, they would like to see students take them. And if they, have too, if they have too many AP classes where they don't take the test, it negatively affects them in admissions. So just be careful with that. All right. I, one. I would be fine. <laughs> but if they start to do that with all of their AP classes, then it does hurt. But what if they get ones? Is that the that's, that's what I meant. One, one a score of one, not one test.
If they have a salmon color schedule, make sure they get this new schedule. And there could be like a little bit of tension because the kids already picked up a schedule at Viking Day. They really like that schedule. But a last minute change had to be made. There are not many of these. But the kid's going to say something like, but I, I really like my old schedule. Don't give me that one. But you've got, you know, you got to arm wrestle them or whatever. But you really need to get them this schedule because this is the schedule they have to follow. Again, not very many of these. Um, lockers. Lockers. Um, kids cannot claim a locker until lunch. And any kid who puts a lock on before lunch is going to get cut off. So make sure you're really clear with the students in advisory that no locks on lockers until lunch. And then there's more information in the packet about what to tell kids about lockers and how to sign up for them, et cetera. Um, and then at the end of advisory, pick a responsible kid in the group. I know you probably don't know them, but you know you can tell the responsible right. ones. And um, <laughs> hand, <laughs> hand that kid all your, um, any forms that you collected. So like Dave said, this year forms are being done online electronically through Chalk School, but kids might have a PTSA form and some money to turn in or a foundation form or whatever. Whatever students hand you, put in your advisory envelope, hand it off to a responsible kid and tell that kid to bring it to Mary Lamb in attendance. If you have freshman advisory, they don't really know the school, but I don't know, you can figure it out. John. There are a ton of locks already on lockers, and there aren't any signs up saying we're going to cut it off. Usually there's a sign that says... Jose's putting that up today. Thanks. And, those, and, those are actually locks that have been just left on from last year. From last year. Um, and then people have asked me why we don't, why we don't allow lockers until sure. lunch. Um, when I came in three years ago, uh, we had a lot of kids hopping the fence over the weekend. Uh, and it became kind of just a thing. I get it, it's not a huge deal, but we just don't want them you know, hopping fences and stuff like that. So, I mean, all the kids now typically know it and understand it. They've done it since freshmen, so, uh, but yeah, thanks for that. But it was tradition, Eric. <laughs> Let it be bad, man. Let it be bad. <laughs> if that's our bad, we're all right. <laughs> all right, a couple of things about attendance. And this applies to attendance in advisory, and then also attendance period by period as you go through the day. So. Um, you'll get in your advisory packet that you're going to pick up in your box first thing in the morning on the first day of school. You'll have a roster in it with all the students' names in your advisory. And it'll have their names, and then opposite their names is circulated around the room. The kid signs their legal name first and last next to their name on the roster, and that becomes the first day attendance. That's also what needs to get back into that advisory packet envelope to get back to Mary. Attendance again, if a student isn't in advisory, don't give out their schedule to anyone else. So if I, oh, that's my best friend's schedule, she's not here for three more days, I'll take it for her. No, your friend will get it when she gets to school. And then lastly, attendance, um, talking period by period. If you're calling out your roster and there's a kid whose name you don't call sitting in your classroom, send that kid down to the office as opposed to just handwriting their name onto your roster because uh, now I'm talking like period, you know, you're in third period and you call out all your names and one kid said, oh, you didn't call my name. Send that kid to the office because obviously a mistake is made. It must have been out of the schedule or it should hard. It, it, I don't think Mary's <coughs> printing. No. It's been not on your roll. That's actually an IC that there's issues. Yeah. Then you can go to the office. How late are you guys going to get agents? So you must be taking them over the weekend yes. and stuff like that? Really? I doubt it, but I'm I don't want to say it. I'm just saying that if I printed out my roster today, there's a potential that I should check my seat before I tell them to go to the office. Yes. Yes. Because they may have changed over the weekend. Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. But we have, we have nine new students coming tomorrow. Okay. We need schedules also. Right. So check my seat, not just our printed roster, if we print them this week. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, clerk. So Dave had hard to cover this. The good news are only seven holes. Bad news very few student clerks. Better news, some kids already have student clerk period in their schedule. Um, about 50 kids, Melissa estimated for me. And better news, 
I guess. Uh, kids will drop classes. Hopefully business. <laughs> what? Hopefully business. <laughs> um, so, give a test and post it. There you go. Um, I want to say a word about Assembly Bill 1012. Leave it to our state legislatures to get super involved in our schools. So they've made this new rule where um, kids can't willy-nilly be student clerks. They call it um, non-educational content classes. We can still do it, but there are some new parameters. So um, one of them is students can't earn more than 20 credits in a year, in a four years of high school doing this. The other thing now is parents have to sign off on it. So our um, student clerk form has changed a bit. In the past, it only required the student's signature and then the teacher's signature for whom that student was going to be a student clerk. Well, now there's a little bit of extra verbiage in here according to the law, and parents have to sign also saying, I give my permission for my student to have this non-educational content class. Um, I think the target group were schools that were giving kids lots and lots of non-educational periods just to earn credits, just to graduate. I think that was the target of this law doesn't apply to us, but we're affected by it. And uh, we'll have a new form and question. question. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we still have a rule where we cannot have a student clerk during our prep? Period? Yes. Yeah. I was just getting that to my So we still do have that rule that you cannot have a student during your prep period. And uh, it's what's on the bottom of the screen here. This hasn't changed. One clerk per period, max three a day. Um, none during prep period, and if you need an exception to this, um, talk to Maria. I think I have one more So I'm just going to make a shameless plug for Helmer Center. It's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 3.15 to 5 in the library. Desperately need teachers. It's a pay rate of $30 an hour. Um, you can work Sundays, um, all days. I'm flexible. <laughs> and. Um, for pe teachers who are new, Miko runs the homework center. So if you're in there tutoring kids, it's just straight time with you and the kids. There's no uh, crowd control or management or checking out books or anything like that. So please, uh, I'll send you an email about it. But think about it because they need to think. All right, real quick, just going over some of the school climate facility stuff going on. Um, in your folders are just updated uh, the emergency drills going on this year, and also all the contacts. So I think you probably have the forms from last year to take those off the walls and put those up there. Um, just a heads up on emergency drills. Uh, this year, I will be kind of revamping all the, uh, the search and rescue teams, I think. Sydney Marsh, for those of you who know her, had done that maybe five years ago. It's probably time to redo those and retrain people. So at some point um, this year, I'll be reaching out to all the people who are on teams, new staff, and things like that. So, um, you know, hopefully we never have to use that, but we have to just be prepared. So just a heads up on that. Um, zero tolerance presentations will be the same as in past years. Uh, the assistant principals and Maria will be coming into classrooms. Uh, to do about a 20 minute presentation. Legally, we have to get the kids to sign off on the zero tolerance form. Ninth graders will go to, we'll, we'll be present, presenting in biology classes. 10th graders, World Lit. 11th graders, US History, or APUSH. And 12th graders, Gov, Econ, or HGOV. Um, so you'll be connected ahead of time. Uh, it will be, the goal is to get them all completed in the first three weeks of school. Um, and so you'll, you'll get an email as in the past few years. Uh, we really appreciate your flexibility and time in allowing us to come in to do that. Uh, Shallow Success and our Mental Health PLC, one of your stops on the Wheel of Fun is going to be with uh, Don, uh, Jack, and Brittany. And uh, they're, they're, they have actually officially formed their Mental Health PLC to help us with, help us with some of the work around Shallow Success and reducing stress. Obviously, it's an ongoing conversation, as Maria said yesterday, or we talked with our parents when they come, came in two nights ago for our incoming ninth graders. It's something they care about and something they want to be part of also. And so as we just continue this work, um, 
you know, we'll have a couple all staff meetings around certain things. I don't know if we're going to resurvey the students this year with the challenge success survey, but at some point this year or next year, we'd like to get some new data kind of to see if there's any changes based on our baseline data. Uh, one person I am excited to have on staff is Leslie Robledo, um, who at her time off Monta Vista the past couple years worked with the challenge success team there. So it'll be fun to kind of get ideas from her on kind of how Monta Vista worked through some of the similar challenges that we have here. Yeah, yeah, the, the Stanford organization that okay, part of, yeah. Uh, Cupertino, Monta Vista, and ourselves are part of it. Uh, the next bullet point is one of the things actually we're kind of stealing from Monta Vista is uh, conflict calendars. Uh, I think there's a, a handful of teachers here that use it already. Uh, John Hawk has been awesome enough to actually print out blank calendars for teachers. It's totally optional, uh, but I would be really curious if you do uh, kind of start this in your classroom how you use it, um, how students use it, if it's useful for you, what type of information gets put up there. So John has made kind of um, enlarged prints of a template of calendars for September and October. And typically we found that teachers put it up in their classrooms and actually the, the students are the ones who update it. So it's pretty low maintenance for the teachers. But yeah, hey, if there's a whole week where there's like four other classes or tests and projects going on, it just gives you an idea of what's going on. It's not like a rule like you can't do anything that week, but it's just a way of kind of allowing them to communicate to you what's going on in their lives and what's busy. And so you can kind of understand what's going on too. Kathleen? Um, are the ones that want to laminate it so they can dry erase? <coughs> I don't know, Leslie, are they? Yes. Yeah. So we uh, thought about the lamination, um, and obviously this is a lot of paper that we're going through. We're open to ideas. This is a totally pilot for the first two months, and then we're kind of open to however we want to change it kind of going forward. We have heard from students here that teachers, I think Michelle Quinnipan does one on her white erase board and changes it every month, um, and has one of her TAs that's in charge of organizing it up. Um, that's a pretty cool thing that students have said. It helps just to be able to communicate with the teachers. I just want to say this was actually something the students brought back themselves to when they did their IDC exchange at Monta Vista. This was something that the kids that went there were really impressed with and thought it was a really cool idea and really wanted to bring that back here. So it was kind of student driven as well, not just the we think this is a good idea, they think it's a good idea too. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So is there a way to do it online? Like you know how you do Google calendars and so teachers can actually put it on there. Oh, like uh, school wide. Yeah. I I I heard here at Lindbrook there was something. Yeah. Because like that, that yeah. if you're at home and you go out to look and you can just have this. Yeah. Big president, a research paper going on the next year. That's what's going on. Um, 
I don't know, I, I, I think Michelle actually has kids put like their birthdays up there. It's a simple way to, to just have a, your, it's no people's birthdays, so. Yeah, do you care? I don't know, Marianne Galloway sends like whose birthday it is every day. I know you read that. guidance counselors when we meet with families and stuff like that so when you're going over green sheets please make sure you're explicit about you know there's things that you see happen throughout the year or a lot of veteran teachers things here at Lindbrook please be explicit as explicit as possible with various things here at Lindbrook like academic infractions okay you guys see things happen in your class during class during test during tutorial please I mean I like when I was a teacher I just said this is what I've caught kids doing before don't do it Dave Taylor and I, we have like an eye to eye on this. Very specific of what you see so they know that you know what the heck is going on and just educating them on what not to do. Don't take pictures of my test during tutorial, even if you're a 4.0 kid, and I know you're not trying to cheat, but do not take pictures of my test, okay? It happens, because they want to study off it at home. I get that, but talk to me. Teacher, overdoing it. Okay, that communication piece. Mike, do you want to say something? I just don't, I don't understand that. You know. Okay, but I think at least it on our side of the state. I know. I don't understand it. But then we have parents and kids going, "I want to study off it because it might show up on the final." It takes hours and hours. To but there, that's I, I. I get what you're saying, and it's just absolutely illogical. Hey, I know it's reality. Um, parents request. Yeah, so please make it it's explicit. We yeah. try to do it during our zero tolerance. We go through, I mean, we're, we don't talk about fights and drugs and trying because it's not an issue here at Lindbrook, but we do focus on what is, what are the issues here at Lindbrook. Um, just a few things that kind of come up sometimes when I meet with students. Um, you know, they want, they want to know explicitly what they can and cannot do, and I always say, please talk to the teacher if there's any questions. Cell phones during tests, during tutorial. Kids will take out their cell phones during tutorial because it's pretty open. I know you guys are busy and take pictures of things, so just be fully aware of that. Um, another thing I always hear from students that they really stress out about is when um, teachers hand back, hand back tests um, or the system that you have to turn in tests or homework. Um, they get stressed out sometimes if they're not that 4.0 A-plus student with, um, there's a whole competition thing, like they know their friends and peers are looking at their test scores, and that then turns into a comparison with our kids. I know we don't have 100% security, and it can't be on top of that all the time, but just please be aware of that. I'd be curious if you have those conversations with your class at the beginning of the year about when I hand back tests, or this is how I typically do it as a teacher, What what is this okay, or what would you like? Getting some anonymous feedback from them, because that's what I hear a lot from students of, Oh man, I, I know we have a policy of not posting uh, grades and test scores even by student ID because our kids memorize other other students' student IDs and stuff like that. It happens, um, but it's that's something that you know it's a pretty unique to Lindbrook. Of that's what they get stressed out and they think they don't want to be compared um, because of those high expectations. So just something to be aware of. And then the last thing is, um, I did hear this from a few students last year, and I didn't, I didn't want to know teachers' names, but they were saying that teachers were posting work on school loop or online at like eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night that was due the next day. Um, and so, I think we, I think we can all agree uh, that that's not a, a really good practice. Um, I don't think you would email your colleague at eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night. I know Kathleen's very clear. She's like, no, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm, I, I'm not available online after that. So if you can make a considered effort, I think it's fair practice to, in class, what, whatever you um, assign for that day, that, that's whenever that's due, just make that very clear. But um, I heard, I, I, I'm on the PAC committee, on the district committee that hears from other students in uh, other schools, and we've heard it at other schools too, so it's not just a limber thing. So, you know. Yes, kid. Kids lie. <laughs> they can lie, but I'm just saying what I hear, I get it. You take away. But I have to say, I've talked to teachers who have said, yeah, sometimes it's just the end of the day, I forgot to tell the kids they had homework. So I post it like around 4 o'clock. The teachers have said that to me. But I kind of think that if you're in that jam, then they get a free night yeah. and you don't have to sign homework. Yeah. So kids tell things that aren't true, and I've had teachers tell me. And it happens, right? You're super busy, it, your next lesson depends on it, so you 
posted at five o'clock. Cool. So just, I mean, a, a few reminders. I like to share things I, I, that we hear and stuff like that. It's not a secret. Um, it's just, you know, I didn't, I didn't want names. I didn't get names. But um, I think we can all agree. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> true God or true meet me, meet me behind the true code. Yeah. All right. Um, as Maria said yesterday, we are, we have, we have a new facilities manager. Uh, his name is Terry Swanson. This is a picture of him. Uh, his first day is our first day of school on Monday, so he had to pass fingerprints, all things like that. So Steve is actually going to stay on through the end of the month, a few days a week, oh, to help him transition, things like that. I totally understand. You know, second semester, as we were, you know, working with our other new facilities manager, things like that, there were challenges and things like that. The service that you guys were used to was not there. So obviously, with Terry. You know, be patient, but explain specific things, introduce yourselves. He's going to try to be out and about. Um, I believe he oversees a group of custodians for South San Francisco District, and he's ending that on Friday. Previous to that, um, he was the night, kind of the Tony, the overnight, um, the swing shift head at Carlmont High School. So he really wants to be on a site and kind of be part of kind of the flow of a school year. And we were at, Maria asked him that during his interview, and he had a he had a really great answer, and he said his his like biggest priority is always super clean bathrooms. Yay! Um, like Maria, in the interview, he went off for like 15 minutes. But it, it got kind of awkward because the, the head guy from uh, Fremont, Carlos, was in there, and they were like having a love fest over like, oh, you use like WX40 solution. <laughs> Can you teach me how to clean my bathroom? <laughs> um, and his, his, the line that I remember is like, if you smell like any kind of scent or anything, that's BS because you're covering up for something in the bathroom. <laughs> and like all of us that looked around the table were like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, he seems to be he seems to be great. He'll be here Monday. Steve will be walking around. Um, but for any facilities needs, uh, email Steve for now. I'm not sure if Terry has the email up and running. Bye bye to those little flies. But, uh, ho hopefully, 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 <laughs> they were targets. Go from there. There's a I would email Steve for now. He's pretty responsive on email, and then what I, I mean, starting that when Terry's up and running, we'll put an email out saying okay. he should be emailed. So. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Oh, hey, one thing about uh, karaoke this afternoon. Don't be that person. Oh, I'm gonna come. That should be late. And like, kind of cruise in the side because there's like free food and stuff. Get there at 3:30. We're hiring the guy from 3:30 to 5:30. When you see this DJ, you're gonna be like, that is a karaoke DJ. Like, he, is, he is straight out of the movies. Get up there. Get up there with some friends. We have appetizers pre-ordered. They're gonna be ready, ready to go at 3:30. I've got some awesome. I've got some awesome prizes ready to go.
My job this year is to be the AP of fun. So Dave's going to help me because right now I'm like the quiet, shy person in the group. Uh, and uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'll ever get to toe touches, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even try. Like, you know, just to, I'll just look for a moment. Okay, you can go off. So, other than work, um, I have a big family. I think a big family. I have three kids. I have a freshman. Uh, my daughter's starting at Cupertino this year. So, uh, I, I see everything through the parent lens right now, but when I see something come in from Cupertino, I'm like, oh, we need to tell our kids this, and, and vice versa. So I really am sensitive to what our freshman parents are going through of looking for where do my kids belong and how are they gonna feel when they're here. Um, my other daughter's in seventh grade at Lawson, and my son is starting kindergarten at Nimitz. So we have four school schedules that have all been collaborated onto a Google Calendar, and. We are just a very busy, busy family. My husband, um, he's kind of the reason we left Tahoe and came down here. For both of us, it was good, but he builds, uh, he's a, uh, what does he do? He's a construction manager for real estate, and he's currently working on lodging, so all the lofts that are going up, that's his company that he manages to get those built. Um, I'm also, in May, I finished my classes for my educational doctorate in organizational leadership. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I have a dissertation, just this tiny little thing to write. First, <laughs> then we can all cheer. So hopefully in January that will be done. So those are kind of what I do when I'm not here. Um, what did I have? Anything what else? was the map? Oh. Oh, Mount, sorry. So this is, um, I went to, I, my classes are at University of Laverne, and it's down in LA, to go to the hybrid course. And this is a rock that is outside their social center, and your group, whoever you are at the, at the school, can rent the rock for a day, or you reserve the rock, and then you get to paint it and put your names on it, or put whatever, so the sororities do it, the fraternities do it. So this was our last day of class, and we got to go and put all our names around the edges, all of our names and our handprints are on the rock. And it stays that way for 24 hours. And then <laughs> another group comes and paints it white and does their stuff on it. So um, it was quite a process. You know how we have processes in school that we have spent years refining this process, like supervision rotations, right? Mm -hmm. There is a process. There was a 10 page packet for getting this rock for 24 hours, and the type of paint you had to do, and where you could wash your brushes, and it was, uh, so it was funny, because when you go to someone else's school and you see their processes, you kind of wonder, where did this 10-page packet come from? But it's because of situations that have arisen across the years. So um, I know, and I, I really value Winbrook's processes. I know you guys have spent years in this discussion and um, I'm, I'm getting through, I'm about halfway through the clubs process book. I, I'm, Brittany's giving me a, a crash course on the homecoming book. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, bear with me. If I miss one of the rules, just give me a tap on the shoulder and say, hey, you missed this one. And uh, I'll make sure to put it on my study list. Um, so that's about all. I just wanted you guys to know who I am. Uh, so when you come in my office, and I look forward to getting to know all of you. And tomorrow, I have another 45 minutes with Andrea. We're going to bring the ASB kids in, and we'll go over all the details. You can go to the next slide. We'll have breakfast to start, so we'll feed you well, and then we'll talk about ASB homecoming and field trips. Um, I did want to give a little plug for athletics. I was talking with Tony, who is our athletic booster, and one of the things he mentioned to me is, uh, like our football team, and our decline with other things, you know, football has been getting smaller also. And he said, I don't think people realize if football gets smaller, that means that the crowds get smaller, which means our concessions get smaller, which then doesn't fund our other things in athletics. And I thought it was just a good reminder that if you're looking for something to do on Friday night with your kids, come out and spend some time at a football game or at the concerts. And I don't know the culture here. Maybe you're all here a lot with your families. But I look forward to bringing my family and spending some time um, at those things. So I hope to see you guys here, too. Anything else? Jan needs to come up. Okay. Yes. I apologize for kind of being discombobulated when we first started. There is one page in your packet that I forgot to uh, talk to you about, and that's your subfolder 
uh, sheet that you need to fill out is blue. Make sure you fill it out with your classes, where things are, everything, and turn it into Marianne Galloway as soon as you can. Thank you. So um, just one more thing before you take off, I just want to remind you that uh, before you all get crazy busy with your classes and everything, I just kind of want you to think about um, how you might want to contribute in other areas on campus too. I know you're all busy in your classes and that really is a big priority, but there's a lot of things that we want to start doing. And so I want you to think about maybe if you talk to your DC, maybe you're interested in being a member of the um, advisory council, right? If you're interested in being on the leadership team in the sense of you just come and help be a part of that think tank and help plan, uh, Wednesday mornings or have ideas about menu days, things like that, just to try to uh, get involved. There's also, uh, I just kind of want to give a shout out again to uh, Michael, Kim, and uh, Stephen Roy, who are this year's Skillful Teacher cohort. Um, am I forgetting somebody? I think I got it. Well, I'm on What's that? Amy. Oh, and Amy. I forgot Amy. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So, but we, because we're a smaller school we, and we don't have a lot of new teachers, because what happens is when people come to Limbro, people stay, right? It's a great place to be. So we don't have a lot of turnover. So, um, but we do have people who have gone through Skillful Teacher before. And so Josh wanted me again to extend that um, invitation to all of you who've already been through Skillful Teacher to come to the lunches, you know, to feel free to come to those lunches and kind of tap back into maybe some of the things that you've done and you've tried, share that kind of information with the um, teachers that are currently going through that course. And it's always nice to hang out with Josh and, um, and you get lunch at it. So if you want to do that, please let me know. Yes, I will post the schedule up and I'll let you know. And then you can just contact Josh. And then there's also, um, I'll send more information out about this, but the, I did this Courageous Leaders thing the first time it went through, and it was really hard because it was after school, like Monta Vista from like four to six, and I was like already comatose by like 3.30. So it was really hard to be inspired and focused that late in the afternoon, even though they gave us dinner. Um, but it was a lot of time to give up. I did find some of the stuff that they did really valuable. And what's hard with staff development is, you know, you give up the time to do it, and, and it's never always perfect, right? But if there, I always thought it was a valuable experience if there was at least one thing I could take away from, my, from that time. And I have to say there was always one thing I could take away. So there was a value to me. What they did now is they're doing a Courageous Leaders 2.0 kind of reboot, where they're uh, setting it inside the school day. So no longer is it out of school. So you, what's hard then is you hate leaving your kids, right? Because you have to do stuff. But it will be um, afternoon. And they have some data set. So as soon as I get more information about that, I'll send it out. Um, and if there's a description of it. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there and encourage you to get involved with that. Yeah. Yes? Is there anything else you guys have? No? Any questions? Where do you go next? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.